Hey guys, it's Maddie, and today we have episode number 21 of 10 Things You Didn't Know About. In today's video, we will be following a few fun facts you probably didn't know about the fan favorite Freightliner Cab Over Collection. But before we begin, if you've enjoyed our videos this far and you'd like to help us create more content, please consider joining our Patreon community by visiting patreon.com slash show. Those of you who become patrons will be treated to a video VIP pass with exclusive early access to all new episodes of our brand new Trucking Culture series, including the Convoy content we have coming, as well as receive free decals, t-shirts, and truck posters. Interested in becoming part of our Patreon? Please visit the patreon.com slash show link in the description box below. And remember, folks, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. Number one. Freightliner was officially founded as the company we know today in 1942 and quickly forged on to the forefront of all freight haulers by releasing their first rig ever and also introducing the industry's first commercial vehicle to come equipped with an all-aluminum cab with their Model 600. These Model 600s, or more commonly called shovel noses, however, saw an exceptionally short production period of only a few months before Freightliner began being bombarded with building military materials for World War II. These cabovers were continued after the war around 1947, but would eventually become the B-42 Eastern Freightliner tractor version of the truck in 1950. Number 2. After entering into agreement with White Motors Company in 1951, Almost all Freightliner trucks would start to wear the white Freightliner face until the mid-1970s. With the first white Freightliner co-branded WF-64 cabover coming out two years later in 1953, this white Freightliner would feature a few firsts, including the first ever overhead sleeper, optimized for over-the-road applications while also accommodating restrictive length requirements at the time, as well as one of the first alternatively fueled designs to ever debut, with the ability to be powered by liquefied propane, diesel, or gas. These WF-64 trucks promoted the partnership and popularized the White Liner nickname for both the new merger and the model. Number 3. Following Freightliner in the entire industry's first 90-degree tilt cab cab over in 1958, the company continued to grow, and production picked up pace at a rapid rate due to their popularity, with sales seeing an increase of over 33%. This, in combination with increasing import tariffs imposed by Canada, caused the company to open up its first Canadian Freightliner manufacturing facility in Burnaby, British Columbia, in 1961. Continuing on this cabover craze, production efforts were also increased in the states, with assembly plants opening up in California, as well as right here in the Hoosier heartland of Indianapolis, Indiana, less than an hour away from our home here at Jack's Chrome. Number 4. The company continued to make a killing on their cult classic cab overs, and in 1965, they took things to the next level when they produced their turbo liner truck, powered by a big Boeing turbine gasoline engine. This allowed a more aerodynamic approach, with an overall weight of 2,400 pounds less than that of other trucks at the time offering diesel engines. Unfortunately, the greatly growing gasoline prices took a terrible toll on the turboliner truck sales, and the model was eventually phased out of production after only a few years. Boeing wasn't far behind either, and in January of 1966, they too decided to discontinue their gas turbine production shortly thereafter the turboliner's release in order to focus their resources on the 747 jumbo jet program. Number 5. Also around this time in 1968, White Freightliner featured their van liner vehicle, 
which was offered for over-the-road operations with the first-ever extended van-like super sleeper cab, also debuting the first full 54-inch double mattress design, also known as the Model 10464T, because the cabovers came in 104-inch bumper-to-back-of-cab configurations, these van liners were very versatile and launched as the most luxurious long hauler, with the model marketed as a truck with a living room. Number 6. Perhaps the most prominent cabover model ever produced by the company was the crazy popular Powerliner model made in 1973, which lived up to its large and in-charge name by packing a powerful punch, producing 600-plus horsepower housed in a huge 2,000-square-inch radiator. Freightliner's flagship Powerliner featured a flashy, jumbo-sized grill and was launched as the largest cab over ever created by the company, holding a huge spot in Freightliner's history, as well as the hearts of classic, old-school, cool cab over collectors across the country. Number 7. Despite the popularity of the prolific Powerliner, the distribution deal between Freightliner and White dissolved the next year in 1974. But before this business merger went belly up, White Freightliner manufactured their 100,000th model, a special edition cab over engine, which several said looks strikingly similar to the classic cartoon series Scooby Doo Where Are You? It's Mystery Machine. Number 8. Freightliner announced their final cab over edition in 1998 with the all new Argosy model, which made its debut as a concept cab over derived directly from the Century Class conventional. In fact, this Argosy adopted a bunch of body components including doors, grills, windshields, and headlamps from the cult classic Century Class Freightliner, while also taking from the truck's telematic technologies, boasting electronic braking, messaging capabilities, and much more. The Argosy also featured the first flat floor cab over design with electronically powered pivoting entrance steps offered on all sleeper cabs. Following Freightliner's announcement of the Argosy's withdrawal in America in 2006, the Big Rig became the last Class 8 cab over sold in the States, with almost all production post-2007 being exported exclusively to Australia, New Zealand, and South Africa from Freightliner's facility in Cleveland, North Carolina. Number 9. In addition to the original Argosy, Another second-generation Argosy was also introduced in 2012, six years after its discontinuation in the U.S., and while primarily still produced in the States, is sold exclusively for export. While this new rendition of the Argosy retained the same basic cab structure as the first famous freight hauler, this second generation saw design shift to incorporate more influence from the innovative new Cascadia model the Century Class Conventional Rig's replacement. However, the newest additions to the Argosy line continued to make use of the original doors also shared on the Columbia and Coronado models, while simultaneously adopting a strikingly similar dash configuration as the Cascadia and giving a sneak peek of the same single-piece grille that would later be used on the 2018 Cascadia truck models. Number 10. If you'll recall fun fact number four from our recent 10 Things You Didn't Know About Dodge Trucks video, Dodge debuted their heavy-duty L-Series tilt cab cab overs in 1964, which were often called Michigan Centipedes due to their abundance of axles. However, Freightliner also created a couple centipede cab overs as well, which beyond their regular rigs, were ran exclusively in the state of Michigan. Many of these Michigan models were made in 3334 multiples and eventually expanded to the East and West Coast markets. Thank you all so much for watching our 10 things you didn't know about Freightliner cabovers. Before you leave, make sure you like the video, check out the other videos on our channel, and subscribe. We have finally reached our goal of 20k subscribers, so thank you all so much for your support for the show. Next stop, 50k. 
If you have any questions, comments, concerns, or anything else you'd like to talk to us about, please be sure to tune into our podcast, The Chrome Corner, Wednesdays at noon Eastern Standard Time, and join Maddie and Dave as they answer viewers' questions and discuss all things Chrome. If you'd like to stay up to date with the new projects we have coming, please follow us at Jack's Chrome Show on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. We still have our truck history shirts available on our website at jackschromeshow.com, so please be sure to check them out. Save stacks on stacks at jackschromeshop.com with the all-new Roadworks exhaust kits for Peterbilt and Kenworth trucks. Thanks so much for watching. We'll see you next week. And remember, guys, if your rig don't shine, you don't know Jack. Jack.